It's Legit Podcast Pro, and today it's a grab bag of topics relating to the podcasting community. Stick around right after this. to the okay hello and welcome and thank you for being here this is legit podcast pro i am your host gordon firemark the podcast lawyer and today unlike most of our episodes it's unscripted un uh planned maybe a little disorganized and uh i'm okay with that because i want to get in here and share some information with you uh, as I do every week on Thursdays, this is usually done live at 4 p.m. on Thursday as a live stream on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, and I think that's all of them. Um, and I didn't want to miss the week, so here we are. A couple of things in the news this week that I thought everybody might be interested in. First of all, the WGA, the Writers Guild of America, has gone on strike against the Motion Picture Television Academy. Um and, uh, excuse me, the Motion Picture and Television Association uh, is different from the Academy. The AMPTP, this Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, is the employer side of things. And the writers have gone on strike because the um, their contract is up for renewal and the negotiations didn't, haven't gone the way they wanted. They are mainly concerned about a couple of things, the, the, not the well, most important of which is compensation, of course. The concern arises from the fact that the world has changed in the last couple, well, decade or so. Um, the the world of television and film has changed, and movies and television are showing up on streaming services that have historically been treated very, very differently from broadcast television or movies meant for the big screen theatrical distribution. And um, and the pace scales have been lower for the streamers. But over these last few years, many, many, many people have cut the cord. They're not paying for cable anymore. They're not watching traditional broadcast television. They're getting all of their content from streaming, Netflix, um, uh, Paramount Plus, uh, HB, you know, all the, all the pay channels, but also Peacock and, and Hulu and all those. And so that has become now the main way that people consume a lot of their entertainment content and the writers feel justifiably so, I think, that those kinds of content should not necessarily be treated as differently as they have been historically, um, writers get need to get paid a living wage to uh, to earn a li- you know to be able to make a living doing what they do, um, and uh, many times those streamers aren't paying as much of a living wage. There's also the question of residuals. That uh, residuals are basically payments that come out on the back end after the show is made for reruns and repeats and things like that. Well, again, in the streaming age, the video is basically on demand and we don't um, get to, uh, we, we don't get to, you know, track things quite the same ways. And of course the streamers are very, very closed, uh, closed off about sharing data about what shows are, generating the most watches and those kinds of things. They're, they brag about it on some platforms and they keep it quiet in other ways and it's very hard to tell. And the writers want to have their compensation tied to subscriber numbers or viewership numbers. The platforms, uh, the the I should say the producers and distributors of the content are very reluctant about that. Uh, and after all, they, you know, they, they make the point that their profits are not driven by subscribers or, or viewers of a single show, but that in fact it's an overall subscription. They're not running ads. They're not getting paid. You know, the economics of the industry has changed. So that's another thing the writers are are concerned about. A third point that they're concerned about, and this is something that we in the podcasting space really ought to be thinking about, is the role that AI is going to take in creating entertainment content going forward. It is possible for AI to be taught to write a screenplay or a television script. And writers are, I think, justifiably concerned that as a cost-cutting measure, uh, the producers, production companies, and distributors of shows will 
want to use AI uh, to replace writers in many instances. Now, there will always be a role for the creator writer who comes up with the original concept for a show or the or the even the idea for a particular episode or so on. But if you can tell an AI, hey, write me a scene where Jim Rockford is investigating a, a bank robbery and has a conversation with his lawyer who was in the bank when it was robbed, you know, that scene gets spit out and and uh, uh, and you didn't have to pay a writer for that day of work to accomplish that. So uh, they're concerned about that. They don't want, writers don't want AI to become a replacement for writing staff um, because writers need to get paid, basically. So that's another point of concern. Now, this AI thing in the podcasting space, same issue, right? Creators, uh, those shows that are scripted, that have narrative uh, storylines and things, those shows that need writing, um, right now there are only a, a small number of shows and, and production companies that are signatory with the Writers Guild. Um, notably, I think Gimlet Media is one of them. There's a, there's three or four others that have you know made news as being unionized. Uh, this can come to pass in the in the podcasting space as well. And the fact of it is. The, the ideas about compensation and residuals and those kinds of things are things we as podcasters and podcast companies also need to start thinking about because, um, you know, as podcasts grow in popularity, after all, they are also on-demand media and folks are consuming that kind of content very differently nowadays as well. It's no longer listen to the radio and hear the ads and that's how they pay for things. Um, sponsored, you know, podcasts are using an advertising model largely, but there are other approaches coming in there too. So something to be thinking about. How can we uh, treat the workers fairly who are making the stuff that we consume and um, and still make a profit doing it? And if you look at companies like Spotify, um, they are, you know, look, they're in the business of serving up content to audiences that pay for subscriptions. And... Um, uh, and they want to pay as little as they have to to acquire the content that they serve. But on the other hand, they want good quality content, so they have to get it from the right places. And, uh, you know, actually, uh, in, in the chat right now, one of the uh, listeners of the show, Dave Canyon, hello, Dave, nice to see you. He points out, as a truck driver, I don't want autonomous vehicles doing my job either. So I get it, but it is what it is. And, and he says, if I lost my job to uh, as a truck driver, I'd be forced to move on and look elsewhere. Sad but true. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, screenwriters are people who have trained for a long – well, you've trained for a long time on what you do as well, Dave. Uh, but the fact of it is, um, uh, yeah, we're, we're up against a, a changing landscape. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, we can live without the work that writers do. Creativity is a inherently human activity. And while we can um, – you know, we can use an AI to generate a script. It may not be a very good script. It's, I think it still needs the right inputs and the right tweaking and massaging. So the writer who does that input maybe only takes a few minutes to get it started, but they, they're, it's products of the mind. So, yeah, it's, it's sad when humans get replaced for any job, absolutely. But um, when they're unionized, they are in a position to negotiate for the scope and extent that those kinds of things can happen. And I don't think this is just the writers trying to uh, uh, stop the inevitable. I think they're trying to manage the the uh, the use of these tools in ways that provides for good quality of product as well. And um, it is what it is. I mean, it would be wonderful if we all lived in a world where machines and computers did everything we need for us and we could sit back and relax and... And um, then you have to figure out, well, how do we get, how do we make money? How do we earn things? Switchboard operators. Yeah, they're all gone. Absolutely. Um, voiceover artists are encountering the same thing. You know, uh, uh, whereas it used to be that you needed to hire an actor to come and sit in front of a microphone and talk. Well, I hate to tell you, there are folks out there who are doing AI generated audio and video that is hard to distinguish from uh, from real people's voices. And if you can type a script into a machine and out it spits sounding just like you or just like Morgan Freeman or Robert De Niro, well, uh, that's another point of valid concern. In fact, that brings me to a news item I saw today. TMZ this morning, a couple of days ago, actually reporting about um, uh, Tom Brady threatening a lawsuit over an AI special. Actually, it looks like it was back in late April this came out, but uh, still. 
Um, there was an AI uh, comedy special. Um, a couple of comedians who are podcasters, that's the connection to podcasting, uh, they created an animated version of the NFL legend, the greatest of all time, Tom Brady, telling crass jokes in stand-up format. And Tom Brady's company, TB12, uh, threatened legal action over it just days after it was posted, and the podcasters who created the thing took it down rather than fight out the, the questions that rise from this. There are questions. Is it illegal or legal to create a, a faux character based on a real person? Is it their name? Is it their likeness? Is it their, uh, the sound of their voice? Those kinds of things. There are laws uh, relating to privacy, and there are laws relating to what we call the right of publicity, which is essentially the property right that people in some states are given to the name, likeness, and other uh, uh, unique distinguishing persona uh, indicators. So let me see. This is Will Sasso and Chad Kulchin. Um, did, uh, they do a show called Dudesy, and they talked about this uh, uh, fake Brady comedy special. Uh, Brady's lawyers uh, wrote and said this was a blatant violation of the former quarterback's rights, and they were demanded that they immediately remove the use of his name, image, voice, persona, and likeness, and any other unauthorized use of those things from any websites, internet platforms, et cetera, et cetera. So they did that rather than rather than invest in uh, mounting a major legal defense that could be viewed as either uh, an acknowledgement that they didn't have a meaningful legal defense or that they didn't want to invest money in that legal defense. They seemed to clearly think it was BS, but you never know. Now, most of those rights, those privacy rights and the, and the right of publicity that I was talking about, they mainly pertain to commercial uses of people's names and likenesses. So there might be a, um, a defense based on the fact that this is not commercial. The government can't really regulate artistic expressive speech as much as it does with uh, um as it can, I should say, with commercial speech. The laws, the, the First Amendment is more relaxed about restrictions on commercial speech. And there's lots of reasons behind that. We can get into that all, all day long if we want, but that's the bottom line. So these laws, in order to make their way around the, the First Amendment freedom of speech ban on prior restraints, um, deal with commercial use of name and likeness. And that only makes sense. It's a property kind of right. Uh, why should they be able to use your name or likeness to make money without your permission? Without your permission. I don't know what just happened. I ended up uh, bumping something, so bear with me. Let me get rid of this. There we go. Uh, so anyway, the show's not over. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so that's one story. The, well, two stories. The Writers Guild strike, and then we have the Tom Brady thing. Um Pod news today. Today is the, what's today? The 4th of May. Happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Um, Pod news reran an article from back in January of 2022, and it was updated in March about podcasts having the same name, what to do, and how to prevent it. As you know, I'm a strong advocate for protecting your podcast title with a trademark. A registered trademark gives the owner of that mark the right to stop other similar material uh, using confusingly similar brands, I should say, uh, from happening. So it, that's the question. Is there a likelihood of confusion? If so, it's trademark infringement. Trademarks are territorial. That is, you register in a particular country, a particular state. And um, here in the U.S., it's it cover a U.S. federal trademark registration covers the entire United States. It does not necessarily cover the whole world, uh, and you may want to also register in other places. And and uh, James's article from Pod News gets into that a bit. Uh, the real question is, do you need to do this at all? And if you have a, a a very distinctive brand or title for your show that sets you apart and uh, and identifies you as the source of that show, it can be important to do that. That said, if there's not a big, uh, if the odds are slim that anybody else is going to come along and name their show similarly, registration may or may not be uh, a, a worthwhile investment. I, I tend to think it is, but I'm someone who gets paid for doing trademark registration. 
Um, there are also common law trademark rights that exist in most places for the first people to use the title generally win in these kinds of situations. So not having a registration isn't a complete uh, a bar to doing something about it if someone adopts a very similar name. But uh, you get into questions of is there unfair competition going on? Are we passing off your work as someone else's or vice versa? Those kinds of questions. So um, good article in Pod News from uh, March 16th, 2023 republished in today's uh and uh, i actually had seen this article earlier and i'm looking at what is the um what is the new material um i don't know and i'll say thanks to james for the the shout out to me as one of the trademark lawyers in um in uh in the article that he's talking about so um anyway that is that for for my show today i don't have much to add to the conversation um, oh, you know, coming up, I'm going to be talking on a new, a next episode about things that podcasters need to do to uh, achieve the kinds of success they dream of. And another episode coming up will be uh, ways to protect your self and your podcast from the lions and tigers and bears, the copycats, the infringers, and the lawyers that come looking. So we'll be talking about those on future episodes. In the meantime, I'll say thank you for listening. Thank you for being with me today. Come and, uh, uh, and follow me on whatever channels you're looking at, and uh, I'll be back again next week. Thanks for listening to Legit Podcast Pro. See you soon.